Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quick Surf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff I found for this episode. Over at the Seattle Times, uh, in their business and technology section, they have a story here. Satya Nadella said to be choice as new Microsoft CEO. Microsoft's board is reportedly close to naming longtime company executive Satya Nadella as its new CEO, a move several analysts would greet with approval. The report came Thursday from Bloomberg News, which also said that the board is discussing replacing Bill Gates as chairman. Bloomberg's report, which uh, cites people with knowledge of the process who asked not to be identified, said the plans have not been finalized. So uh, should be pretty interesting. We'll see uh, what comes of this. Uh, obviously, there's you know <laughs> a lot more to it than just that, but uh, should be pretty cool. Be keeping an eye on it. From uh, AppAdvice.com, Apple ha- is reportedly focusing on health and fitness in iOS 8 with a new health book app. Apple is said to be moving toward providing comprehensive health and fitness tracking features in the next iteration of its mobile operating system, dubbed iOS 8. As reported by 9to5Mac, iOS 8 is most likely linked to the development of the long-rumored iWatch wearable device. So here's what I envision. Now, I I was actually, for any of of, uh, those of you who have been uh, a longtime subscriber of the show, I I thought Apple was going to come out with a tablet device, uh, you know, and they did. And uh, so here's what I think is going to happen. I I may be wrong, but here's what I think is going to happen. They're going to come out with an iWatch-like device that, that... uh, is basically like a bracelet. You'll be able to tell the watt, the time with it if you want. Um, and it will also have a bunch of measurement stuff. So it'll know, uh, you know, a lot like how Fitbit works today. And, but instead of clipping onto your clothes, it'll just be something you wear. And it'll be super low power. Uh, and it will talk to your phone either via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something of that nature um, and communicate to... Uh, your phone and you'll only have to plug it in uh, to charge it like once a week or something of that nature. It, you know, I, the whole having a display that you can then check your messages or answer mail or whatever. It's like, really? No, 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 no. I, I don't see that at all. I see it as something that's more of an instrumentation type device that you can also use as a watch. That's what I think. There's a lot of, you know, obviously there's more to it than that, but uh, that's what I'm hoping they do is something that it's just you wear it and you don't have to think about it and it alerts you on your phone. You know, there's, you already have a screen. It's called a phone. Okay. You already have one of these. It's called a phone and it has a nice screen. There we go. It has a nice screen already. There's no reason to have a screen like the iWatches that you see, uh, not the iWatches, but the watch type devices that you see. Um, I, I don't, you know, where they go, oh yeah, and you have like a little screen and you and you swipe and it's like a little touch screen and you swipe to, no, 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 I don't, I would never buy one of those. You, the thing, the battery would never last. You know, I'd be plugging that thing in every night. I want something that I can literally just wear, just like my bracelets, where it's a bracelet and you don't think about it, and you wear it 24 by 7, and once a week you need to plug it in to charge it or something of that nature. And so you wear it, it keeps track of your movements when you sleep, it keeps track of and logs where you go all day long, it keeps track of how many steps you've taken, how many calories you've burned, you know, a whole bunch of stuff keeps track of for you, and it's just this unobtrusive thing that you wear, and, you know, it can, like I said, it can be really super low power, and talk to your phone via a special app that they have. That's what I would like to see. Anyway, I don't think that's what we'll actually see, but 
should be pretty interesting nonetheless. From the Latino Post, Xbox One News, a cheaper version of the console, has been rumored for 2014. Can it match the PlayStation 4 price? That's kind of the question. I don't really know. Uh, is it really possible? Could we see a cheaper version of the Xbox One released in 2014? Uh, there's a new leak that, uh, if it's to be believed, a new competitively priced version of the Xbox One may arrive by the end of the year. Speaking under the condition of anonymity, an unidentified source claimed to be a senior publisher working with the Microsoft Compound in Redmond, Washington, revealed that Microsoft has told trusted publishing partners that the company will release a cheaper new model of the Xbox One before the end of 2014. Sounds pretty cool. So uh, should be pretty neat to see what comes of it. Definitely uh, be keeping an eye out for that. From foxnews.com, Tesla is aiming for cross-country speed record, but not the kind you think. Interesting. A team from Tesla is hoping to make history this weekend. It left Los Angeles early Thursday morning in two of the company's battery-powered Model S sedans en route for New York in an attempt to set the Guinness record for least non-driving time to cross the United States in an electric vehicle. Never heard of it? Neither have I. Well, that's because the category was created just a couple of weeks ago, according to a Guinness World Record spokesperson and ostensibly, ostensibly tailored to this publicity stunt. That's possible. From PC Magazine, Apple has been sued for infringing on a touchscreen patent. What? Apple this week was hit with a patent lawsuit over the use of a touchscreen panels in products like the iPad Air. Hilltop Technology said on Wednesday uh, they filed suit in a Texas district court alleging that Apple is infringing on a patent it owns for a capacitive type touch panel. The patent was first filed in April 2008 and issued in January 2011, according to Hilltop. The company alleges that all Apple products have a capacitive type touch panel, including its iPad Air. According to Hilltop, it has suffered monetary damages in an amount not yet to be determined and will continue to suffer damages in the future unless Apple's infringing activities are enjoined by this court. Really? Let me think. I, I think Apple had a product using this before you filed a patent. When did Apple come out with the first iPhone? It was 2000... See, in 2008, I had an iPhone. In September of 2008, I had an iPhone. It was either June 2008 or 2007. Uh, late, mid to late 2007. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, I'm, it seems awful sketchy to me. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. From UPI.com, scientists delve into secrets of planets orbiting twin suns. British astronomers say they've uncovered secrets of a planet orbiting twin suns like Luke Skywalker's fictional home planet Tatooine in Star Wars. What? The planet Kepler-34ab, discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope, is a circumbinary planet, so-called because its orbit encompasses two stars. Binary star system is possibly the most extreme environment in which a planet could form, Researchers at the University of Bristol said, since powerful gravitational perturbations from the two stars on the rocky building blocks of planets should lead to destructive collisions that grind down the material. So, should be pretty interesting to see how they explain that one. Uh, be keeping an eye on that. From uprocks.com, remember to breathe as you watch this GoPro Space Jump Super Bowl ad. That's right. Uh, one of my favorite events to experience live in 2012 or ever was on October 14th, 2012, when Felix Baumgartner jumped from 127,852 feet and become, became a new world record holder for distance jumped. It uh, was awesome, and they're going to be replaying some of this footage in HD for the Super Bowl this weekend. So for those of you who are here in the U.S., the Super Bowl is this weekend between Denver and Seattle. And uh, 
should be pretty interesting to say the least. So the uh, GoPro has a 30 second Super Bowl ad that shows the moment Felix jumps from the balloon construct. He very quickly turns into a little white dot against the gigantic blue marble that is the planet Earth. So should be pretty awesome. I am definitely looking forward to uh, seeing that. I'm gonna see if I can catch it online beforehand. Usually they release this kind of stuff online. Should be pretty neat. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.